In this video, I want to talk about the different types of rainwater tanks and also will cover rain gardens at the end. Now, most of my clients are early childhood services and schools and there are some things to consider, uh, especially related to compliance, which we'll cover. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au and there are five pillars of sustainability and water falls under the pillar four, which is resourcing, hence the content of this video. But let's start with asking why installing a rainwater tank in the first place? Well, your garden, your plants, your outdoor greenery or trees, they prefer rainwater. That's something they have known for millions of years that hasn't been treated chemically. So that's one reason. Second reason, it's free. Uh, obviously, you have to install the tank, which costs some money, but after that, that's free. Uh, then you teach the children that water is not just something that comes out of the wall, that if there is a drought, the rainwater tank will be empty. That means that rain, we depend on the nature, right? You, they can play with water, re, uh, natural water, I mean rainwater for outdoor play. Also, you can have in the, in the event of fire emergency, maybe if you're in some remote, in some remote area, you have a large body of water, a uh, few thousand liters of water that you can use instantly like that, right? That is there for you, so that's, that's uh, another, another reason. And you can even plug it into your toilets or your laundry or to your dry creek beds, if you have dry creek beds, or your irrigation. And that way you pretty much build water independence and water self-efficiency. Well, in Australia, we are on the driest inhabited continent. And even if we were in Norway or Switzerland or New Zealand, uh, countries that have plenty of water, only 1% out of all global water is fresh water readily available for us to drink. Uh, most of water is obviously ocean, so that's unsuitable. But even the fresh water, it's most of it, 98% uh, of that fresh water is actually locked in glaciers, uh, inaccessible to us. So water is precious resource. We have two types of rainwater tanks, small and large. This is obviously a large one, but we'll start with small ones. They come in different types and colors and shapes and sizes. The typical volume is between 100 to 300 liters. You can get it from anywhere from 70 to 200 bucks from your hardware store. And normally the installation doesn't require any type of consent, whether it's development application or landlord's approval. All you need to do, you need to put it on a flat surface, but it doesn't have to be special little concrete slab, you know, or anything like that. And you just cut the piece of gutter out and slot it in and then the pipe feeds the tank and then the children can harvest water. So that's pretty much it. Now with large rainwater tanks, and that means from about three, 500 liters up, now, there are a few things we need to consider. So, number one is shape. The round tanks, like that, obviously you need lots of space. So that's one type, round. Then we have slim line, large rainwater tanks. As the name suggests, they are slim, so they are, uh, uh, they are adjacent to the wall. You can even get uh, what it's called an ultra slim line tank, like that, which is really slinky if you don't have a lot of space like a narrow pathway or something right then you can have an under deck rainwater tank if you on a slope that's especially suitable if you're on a slope or you can get uh, an underground rainwater tank or they call it a muffin right it doesn't have to be muffin shape but that's quite typical shape so there are f these are the four types of large rainwater tanks now any tanks under 10,000 liters, uh, liters of volume, typically under 10,000, normally don't require development application, but uh, larger than 10,000 liter uh, de uh, require development application, but check with your council, each council is different, right? Normally, large rainwater tanks, they require a concrete footing or like a firm footing uh, unlike the small rainwater tanks you can even maybe see it there 
see how that tank has a special platform there and that is to prevent for safety and compliance right to prevent it from toppling over like obviously this one's not gonna topple over but a slim light tank might and it might kill someone right that's gonna be a ton or two tons in terms of cost you're looking at at least thousand dollars up right and that's just for the tank only if you require that concrete footing or if you don't have that flat surface available already that's another cost large tanks typically need to be connected by a plumber unlike the small rainwater tanks where you can just connect it yourself and if you're considering that underground tank then the whole excavation and connecting it and all of that that's obviously gonna cost a lot of money now let's address some of the compliance and safety bits and they apply to large and small rainwater tanks and they are probably applicable to most early childhood services or schools or disability services uh, anywhere where there could be potential risk of you know children drinking water or something like that and it could be a little bit over the top but that's that's the industry or the sector i work in you know so that's very heavily regulated so first thing is to consider is to have some gutter cleanup service right once a year or buy annually or something like that you can also uh, fit your gutters with a mesh and that means that large debris doesn't get into the gutter and then into the tank right if you have tank if you have roofs with lots of overhanging branches and vegetation that means that there are animals there and that they could die they can fall down onto the roof they can also poop right and it gets into the tank but if you have these measures such as mesh or gutter cleaning service or yeah, other uh, uh, that uh, diverter there you are preventing minimizing these risks as well okay now in terms of the water itself if you notice that the water has a sediment in it or that the water smells of sewage or rotten eggs that's a sign that there's something not not right because the water shouldn't have any odor it, i normally drink water in the services to just show that it's fine and i never got sick but sometimes if the water had been there for years stagnant maybe it's something bad inside at which point i would definitely clean it or uh, flush it out um, by the way i put together a bonus for for early childhood services and schools with all these bullet points safety and compliance it's in the link description just put the word rainwater tank in the message so that i know to send it to you it doesn't cost you anything the other thing that you can do with your large rainwater tanks to make sure that the water is pure although maybe it's not necessary but just want to give you that option is to have a diverter slot it into the gutter which captures leaves and sticks and also have a first flush pipe or first flush device which is the same thing it's the pipe that you see in a photo in that circle there as well basically what it does is that imagine if you have two months dry period right on the roof you collecting uh, debris and leaves and sedimentation and dust and pollution as well and then once you get that first rain after two months all of that mess all of that uh, mold and all of that stuff that dust right all of that flushes down to the gutter and into the tank so that that uh, diverter captures the big stuff right but then that first flush pipe which is like a it's like a dead end street or blind alley uh, that captures that sedimentation right and then you can just uncap it and let, let it drain right all that mess all that mess so what happens is that the rainwater that actually enters the tank it's relatively purified okay now if you it again it depends on the on the, your organization uh, some organizations don't even have any risk assessment around rainwater tanks I definitely recommend it to at least uh, risk assess it and I'll give you these points in that bonus so you know what to look at uh, but 
you know, it definitely shouldn't prevent you from installing a rainwater tank because it's quite safe. The, the water, that's rainwater is alive, right? Without it, there wouldn't be nothing. So definitely we shouldn't freak out because of humble rainwater tanks and we should install them as much as possible. Now, let's talk about rain gardens for a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't have one here, but you see them on the screen. So what are they? Rain gardens are a specially designed garden beds, although that term is a little bit misleading because typically rain gardens are not uh, installed for growing veggies to eat, although you can do that. However, uh, what, what are the benefits of rain gardens and why, why it's something to consider? I had been involved in installing some in my previous role. I was working for a large childcare company and basically what they do is that they purify water, the, the storm water that falls onto the roof and then they filter that water through the rain garden feeding the plants, right? And that, that sand and that soil in the rain garden filters the water and captures all the nutrients and all that sedimentation, all that pollution, so that the water that ends up down in the drain in the gutter, that eventually ends up in rivers and ocean, is filtered water. So that's one benefit of rain gardens. The second benefit of rain gardens is that they temporarily capture a volume of water. So as you know, climate change means that we'll have more frequent and more intense extreme weather patterns and that means storms and heat waves and flash flooding etc. So if we have rain gardens next to each gutter next to each roof that means that during the periods of these short but very intense rains and storms we are capturing hundreds of liters of water per each roof depending on the size of the rain garden in that medium so that what enters that urban stormwater system is relatively uh, humble, weak flow. It's not like it's overloading that urban stormwater system. So imagine if each house or each, each property, each building had a rain garden, that would mean that that impact uh, when you have so much water within short period of time over, over flooding that urban stormwater system and therefore causing flash flooding, we wouldn't have it or we would have, have it less severe than we have now because we don't have rain gardens, right? So that's a, the second benefit. As with rainwater tanks, you can have small ones, right? Like a, just a, something like a bathtub next to the, the gutter, or you can have large ones as well. And uh, munip municipalities, for example, City of Sydney and other LGAs are installing them now. They're part of what's called the water sensitive urban design, but you can do it at your home as well. Okay, so, you know, which type of rainwater tank are you going to uh, install or do you already have a rainwater tank? Are you going to do even a rain garden, right? That's something to consider. Uh, don't forget to get that bonus. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing. I'm Jan from Sustainable Butterflies and you have a great day. Bye.